Hey guys. Got a thought um, inspired by some recent posts, as many of my, you know, rant-like thoughts are inspired by. Um, this is concerning the way fitness professionals and people in the exercise industry um, often view certain little tricks out there, things like postural assessments and such. Um, there's been a big push for a long time, you know, longer than I've been in the game, honestly, um, to you know, try to load up on as many as many cool tricks and toys and dazzling techniques as we can, you know, at a conference or whatever, you know, to, to stuff in our toolbox that we can bust out some at some point and you know either impress someone with or so we can feel like we are you know more complete professionals. You know, uh, I know some people, especially on the postural assessment side, you know, they they've learned you know hundreds of assessments and. Um, you know, if you see a body segment do this, then it means that, and they have all these rules that they've memorized, you know, and they're really happy about that. They're really confident about these things. And while indeed, you know, their assessment may or may not be a hundred percent correct in terms of, you know, um, you know, the weaknesses or the tightnesses or the, you know, the imbalances or dysfunctions they think they're identifying, you know, they may be spot on. Or they may not. And what I notice is that um, a lot of people can't distinguish between, you know, a good assessment and a bad one because a lot of people don't take the time to learn about force. I'd wager that a majority, probably, of fitness professionals, people that work in exercise, and this goes up the chain in, into rehab, uh, into medicine even, I, I would say a majority of them don't understand force very well. I'm not saying I'm the world's physics and biomechanics expert. I'm not. I learn from other people much smarter than myself every day. But if you don't at least have a fundamental understanding of forces and torques and how the way you apply force to a body is going to change challenge, then you don't understand exercise. Because rule one of exercise, at least in my opinion, is understand and be accountable for force. If you don't understand that exercise is all about force, then you don't understand anything really because every single exercise that is supposed to work a, a specific muscle if it works that muscle or group of muscles it does so because of forces because the forces that are being applied to the body are best resisted by certain muscles for instance if I'm working my pec with a fly or bench press thing that requires my arm to come forward the reason that works my pec is that the fibers of my pec are lined up in such a way that they can resist that force. So the, the external resistance of the weight plus the weight of my arm and whatnot, or the resistance band or the cable or whatever it is, that resistance is a certain force. And that force changes through the range. That's another talk. That's a whole other you know issue. But the point is, if you don't understand how you're applying force, why you're applying it, what's going to resist it, how that's going to affect the positioning and the weight distribution and effort within the body, then you don't understand exercise. Now, why am I ranting about this? Well, I've seen a number of issues recently come up, uh, you know, whether they're videos being shared or discussions people are having about certain things, and they kind of get carried away with fancy assessments or, um, in my mind, kind of convoluted explanations for what's going on in the body, and they lose sight of the fundamentals. They lose sight of the, the realities that are right in front of them with respect to physics and forces and mechanics. Here's an example. Let me move this over a little bit. Um, I've still got some light outside. Hopefully, it won't, you know, drown out the, you know, wash out the video. But, um, you know, it, I could I could pick on a lot of things. I'm really not trying to pick on anyone, but I wanted to come up with, you know, a little example here. So if you can look at me, if you can see me over here, what I'm going to do. Here's an example of one that I saw recently regarding a, a sort of postural kind of assessment and sort of some conclusions that were being drawn about what may be happening neurologically, completely ignoring the physics of the situation, okay? Now you see postural things and most people will tell you bad posture, quote unquote, is, you know, well, if your butt sticks out too much, you know, big anterior pelvic tilt, which I've already ranted about in some of my writing, um, you know, gut sticking out, you know, so I have a big sway back thing. If you look at my shirt, you know, I kind of, I got a lot of extension in my lumbar spine here and some of my thoracic. Um, 
you know, and the forward head thing, you know, we have all these tags, right, these bad things in the body. And the idea was that, well, if you have this bad posture and you're not contracting your core muscles right, then, you know, that's going to result in weakness elsewhere in the body. And the example being used was a person being in this bad posture, right, so I'm going to try to stand up straight, but they have their gut sticking out, their butt sticking out the other way, and uh, the forward head thing, right, and then they put their arm out in front. And a person tried to push down the arm and said, and it went weak. I was like, see, that's because they're not contracting their core, and so they're not protecting their spine, and the spine, because it doesn't feel protected, isn't allowing the shoulder muscles to contract very well. Okay, maybe. But let's look at a simpler explanation for this. When I stick my butt out this way, and I stick my gut out, and then I lean my head forward, and then I stick my arm out in front, well now, my center of mass has moved forward a little bit. Enough that I kind of feel the weight over the balls of my feet now. I feel like I'm going to fall forward. So I almost want to lean back, okay? If a person pushes down here and I keep my arm stiff, they're probably going to pitch me forward. They're going to tip me over unless I lean back or something. Unless I contract muscles in my back, in my spine, and in my, you know, posterior hip region, right, contracting the glutes. I do stuff really from the ground up. All of these joints from the ground up have to do something to keep my center of mass from moving too far forward. Or to keep all the forces, it's not just center of mass, you know, and gravity, but keep all the forces balanced in such a way that I don't get pulled forward and fall over with the person that's pushing down on my arm. So instead of thinking, the spine doesn't feel protected, so somehow, somehow it's dampening neurologically the communication to my shoulder and not allowing my shoulder to contract really well. Mm, that has nothing to do with that. If the shoulder contracted really hard and nothing else did, you'd collapse. That's the same with any exercise. If I'm doing curls, right, if I don't contract all the other stuff, as soon as a weight comes out in front of my body, the moment that happens, well, if it's a heavy enough weight, it's going to pull me forward because my center of mass might move in front of my feet. And then I no longer have a stable base under my mass. And this is a basic concept. This is something that is, to me, and I think, you know, to people that study physics and biomechanics, this is elementary, yet people miss it because they are so caught up in trying to see some fancy postural assessment to, you know, they're so dazzled by this new fancy trick that they can do on their clients, they forget to pay attention to the realities right in front of them, basic physics, basic mechanics. You can't have your, bit, your center of mass go beyond your base of support without falling over for any length of time anyway. You can't, you know, generate force up here and have the body not do something to maintain tension down to the ground and you know and expect not to fall and collapse or something like that. I like to use an expression um, that I borrowed from somebody and I just love it is that you can't fire a cannon from a canoe. It basically means you cannot generate force, excessive force, from an unstable base. Okay? You picture a gigantic you know cannon sitting on top of a canoe, that thing fires you understand Newton's laws, you know what's going to happen. That poor little canoe is just going to whip right over and you know it's not going to be able to stay in place. Likewise, if I have one muscle group that pushes really, really hard and nothing else in my body is stable enough to kind of maintain the body's position, well then, every, you know, the rest of my body is going to go in the opposite direction of which way I'm pushing. It's not very hard to understand. So again, you know, with this whole postural thing, you know, if I don't do something to keep my body stable, you know, and not just the core, the core is not the only magic thing, support starts from the feet. If I don't keep all that stuff stable, then when a person pushes down and I try to resist them, one of two things will happen. Either I'm going to give way in order to keep my center of mass balanced and keep from falling forward, since all this stuff is squishy, you know, and can't resist the force if this does go rigid, or if I do keep this thing stiff, I'm going to fall forward. So I wanted to rant about that a little bit, and of course you could go into a big, you know, force analysis and draw a diagram of it, but the basic concept is just that if you're going to try to demonstrate 
a, you know, do a strength test or something, you know, I stick my arm out here, or, you know, do a leg thing, whatever. You have to have enough stability in everything else that connects you to the floor or to whatever you're standing on or whatever you're attached to that you can generate good force through that limb that you're trying to test, right? So anytime you see strength tests, think about that. And the same goes for weightlifting or anything, right? It's not just about how strong the muscles that you're seeing work. You know, if I'm curling something, it's not just how strong, you know, my biceps are or whatever. It's everything else also coming into play here. Postural stuff and everything. So I've said enough about that, but hopefully that makes some sense. And, um, you know, so if you work in fitness, you know, uh, and you've been roped in by some of this stuff, I'm not saying that... Um, it's bad. I'm not saying that postural assessments are always terrible. What I'm saying is that we have to make sure that we first account for forces, first account for physics, basic, basic biomechanics. Understand that stuff first. Once you get that locked in, then focus on the fancier stuff. But, you know, don't go for the fancy things. Don't go for the really, you know, uh, the stuff that's really dazzling and impressive at the expense of the fundamentals. Don't ever do that.